is to you've got to look at the care of the uh, uh, care of the um, people part of this because if there's no um, degree of self-interest here in this whole process, well then you know you'll fall, you'll you'll stop all of a sudden. Um, so that's why I like to bring in the holistic management frame, decision making framework into all of this. That a family needs to sit down um, and assess. What is the quality of life that we want to achieve? Um, what is the resource base that we're drawing that from? And what's the future resource base going to be into the future so that we can say, all right, well, we've got a quality of life that, this, that our family has. Every family has its own, although it's not necessarily identified, but every family has its own fabric that makes it a unique unit. Um, and so people, I think, as a family, need to question that. Um, because what else is the 80 or 90 years of our life on this planet worthwhile for? You know, if, you, if you're just working and toiling for the whole time and that's, that's all you've got to say for it, well then, you know, what's the... You know, most, pe most people don't get out of bed in the morning. Um, or a lot of people don't get out of bed in the morning... Um, and consider their quality of life straight away, or they do in the sense that um, it's it's just such a big drag because they've got so much debt and they've got you know they're just catching their tail. So it's a really hard one. So we've got to we've got to really ask what's that quality of life? Identify the forms of production. Identify where our systems are going to how the, how our systems in the future are going to come and work to feed that. To answer the question more directly though, in terms of production, how do we actually change the methods of production? Well, it's quite likely that if you've been farming um, soybeans, corn for a long time, and you've not had any animals in that landscape for a long time, which is pretty well the co contemporary model here in the US and in Europe for that matter, then you're not gonna have too much biological fertility in your soils. So the transition, um, into um, ecological agriculture, for example, is is going to be founded on your need to build up that for that biological fertility. So you need to find out what that actually means, because again, you know, for the last fifty years, we haven't been worrying too much about that. Um, we've actually been doing our best overall to um, overwhelm <laughs> the eco ecologic uh, ecology ecology in our system. So you know. No blame put there. I mean, that's that's the experiment that we've been put through. What we've got to do now is, if we're going to keep going in the future, is start to educate yourself. So, and start doing things very incrementally. So, the first thing that I would do um, to restore the ecological um, fertility, biological fertility in soils, is to get animals out of their sheds and. Um, and start to have them um, work um, out in the field. So use management intensive grazing, which costs very little. It's just wire and, uh, and troughs. And the troughs can be simply moved around by on a trailer. I mean, you've probably got all of the gear that you need to actually have a quick transition into having animals um, involved in your landscape again as far as fencing is concerned you don't a lot of people don't have fences on their farms now um, they don't need them but with this type of grazing all you need is a single wire and electricity that's all you need that's not a big investment especially especially when we're talking cattle here I mean so it's very very simple so if we get start to develop pastoral systems again um, well pasture is the great biological um, development tool that we have for restoring agricultural landscapes. It's where we have a very high level of diversity. Um, it doesn't take much in this country, especially in the um, more humid zones of this country, to develop amazing pastures because you still have mineral, a lot of mineral fertility. It's often bound up in soils here. Um, it's just that biological fertility that's lacking. So if we can get management intensive grazing start to then um, use models where 
we're you know rotating our livestock and our crops through that process then that's going to be a, a really good movement towards um, having a more have, just have as part of the, just having a move towards that transition where um, because it all starts with the soil if we don't build our soils well then you won't be able to do anything you'll be dependent on fertilizers forever you'll be dependent on um, all of the different potions that are out there etc so grazing is a very important part getting the cows out of the sheds at least during the um, the months when there's grass growing um, which is a fair portion of the year um, secondly um, start to investigate your options for local marketing it doesn't need to happen straight away but it's something that um, you should start to, to look at so how can I start to cut down all of these distribution or these losses of income from poor distribution systems where you know I sell my beef or I sell my corn I've got no idea where it goes and I might get five percent or less of the retail price all right well how about we try and go straight up to getting 20% or we go straight up to getting 50% even developing a relationship with a local butcher or something like that you know um, start to change those arrangements so that um, we start to get a few more dollars directly as opposed to um, getting them uh, from elsewhere start to look at building up our hedgerows in our systems again again in in the humid parts of this country it's extremely easy um, you just have to fence off areas on your farm and uh, especially the uh, the uh, drainage depressions and whatnot um, in your planning you'll you know you'll get your whole farm plan which will be based on your aerial photo you'll be able to see quite visibly where all of the areas are too wet I mean they're often people persist with producing on them but they're more trouble than they're worth so from a whole farm planning perspective fence them off let in the humid zone you just have to fence off something for a few years here and nature just takes its course and the forest is an irrepressible force you can certainly get in there and plant it as well but you will develop those um, biodiverse corridors or forest etc that will um, provide a lot of ecosystem services that will generate a lot of um, uh, insects and birds and eco eco ecology that will go and perform a lot of the services that currently are being performed by pesticides um, you know so you can start to move towards that um, so look having a plan is a good thing you've got to not having, having a plan that in um, considers what your family goals and outcomes are and a landscape plan which um, which organizes in an orderly way the phases through the transition to whatever that might be and you know that transition might be 200 years away or 300 years away we don't know um, however long it takes for your family to achieve its goals is however long it will take but as long as you're on that pathway <laughs> then that's the way we should need to go